Today, my lesson for the week, how many of you have heard of the law of attraction? Now, my next question is, have you worked to understand and apply the law of attraction in your own life, right? And that can take different forms. Like some of you are too young, but you know, I watched The Secret, which was a movie, and I think it's here on YouTube many years ago. And there's a few other movies and you know, lots of YouTube videos on the law of attraction that you've worked or tried to apply the law of attraction that you've seen its benefits and you know what it means and how you can apply it. And if you haven't, by all means, that's okay because you know this is a work in progress and it's ever evolving as we are and the deeper you learn more about yourself the more you can apply it so if you haven't or if you've heard it and you're like uh, uh i've been on all those camps right i'm saying this because i've been in all these spaces where i'm like well you can't just think something eh, nah. True. So there's just a lot of misconceptions about it. And I think the law of attraction is, is kind of thrown around a lot and not everyone quite grasps it, right? I am not an expert on the law of attraction, nor do I live with it at the forefront of my thoughts. I'm aware of the law of attraction. However, you know, we forget, <laughs> right? So that is the gist of today, simply because I am now reading this book, The Law of Attraction by Esther and Jerry Hicks. They have lots of videos on YouTube here. And why I wanted to do this is because I find myself forgetting how much of my life is right now the way it is because I attracted it, right? Sometimes we don't realize that all our thoughts are bringing to us things that we want and things that we don't want based on the law of attraction. So if it's okay, I'm gonna read some excerpts from the book that I've highlighted simply because I am not going to make believe that I'm the expert and I always give credit where credit is due and this is what I'm crediting today because um, they've done the work, they live the work, they teach the work to highlight some principles that I think could be very beneficial for all of us, reminders really, right? I just want us to remember these things, right? The law of attraction, a little bit of story but time. You must understand it before anything you are living or anything you observe anyone else living will make sense. Law of attraction. It is the basis of everything that you see manifesting. It is the basis of everything that comes into your experience. Understanding of how it works is essential to living life on purpose. It is essential to living the life of joy that you came forth to live. The law of attraction as defined by Esther and Jerry Hicks is that which is like unto itself is drawn. Let me say that again. That which is like unto itself is drawn. You are drawn to that of which you are like, right? The one who speaks about illness gets illness. The one who speaks most about prosperity has prosperity. So whether it's good or bad, that is what you're going to attract. The radio signals between the transmitting tower and your receiver must match. As you begin to remember this powerful law of attraction, the evidence of it that surrounds you will easily be apparent. Nothing, nothing merely shows up in your experience. You attract it, all of it, no exceptions. That is so powerful. And when we begin to remember this, because we've heard it, right? We've all raised our hands saying, or most of us, right? I don't want anyone to ever feel like they need to know everything because that's not the case. We've all-ish <laughs> heard of the law of attraction. But when you begin to delve into it a little deeper and realize that it is everything because the law of attraction is responding to the thoughts that you hold at all times it is accurate to say that you are creating your own reality so you are in the driver's seat of your life that is what the law of attraction essentially means to me you are in the driver's seat they are drivers who are great and there are drivers who aren't so good <laughs> I used to not be such a good driver. Literally, I used to, you know, not be a great driver. Now I'm a really good driver. How can I apply that? Ooh, how do I get the confidence of being a good driver and apply that to driving my life in the direction I want? And that is, I think, the essence of the law of attraction, as I'm trying to draw an analogy that we can all commonly, you know, refer to. The thought that you are focused upon in your powerful now has activated a vibration within you and the law of attraction is responding to it now. We must still explain that only you could have caused it, for no one else has the power to attract what comes to you but you. By focusing upon this unwanted thing or the essence of it, you have created it by default. 
because you did not understand the laws of the universe or the rules of the game, so to speak, you have invited unwanted things into your experience through your attention to them. And so if you are feeling fat, you cannot attract men. If you feel poor, you cannot attract prosperity and so on. It defies law. How powerful is that? How powerful is that? Before I go into what I found to be a really good solve on how to navigate these attracting waters, that sounded kind of funny, these waters of attraction. Yeah, I guess waters of attraction. Before I go into what I found to be a really cool solution, because so many times people are like, you know, pay attention to every thought. You're like, <laughs> right? Try thinking about every thought. Ah, I don't know about you, but my brain goes bonkers, right? It goes bonkers because there's just too many thoughts. We have like 80,000 thoughts a day. How can we like think about 80,000 thoughts when they're already thought? So now we have to think 160 times, no, 160,000 times because we're thinking about every thought. That's a lot. In my brain, that's too much. So it goes, of course, a little deeper and I have a really cool solve that I found for it. And so I'm gonna read a little bit more. Without exception, that which you give thought to is that which you begin to invite into your experience. When you think a little thought of something that you want, through the law of attraction, that thought grows and gets larger and larger and more and more powerful. When you think a thought of something you do not want, the law of attraction draws onto it and it grows larger and larger also. And so the larger the thought grows, the more power it draws onto it. And then the more certain you are to receive that experience. Wow. And this is why we attract things that we really don't want, right? Has this ever happened to you where you're like, oh, I know, I know it. I'm, I'm going to walk across that stage and I'm going to fall. And what happens? <laughs> You freaking fall, right? It's messed up, but it's true. My understanding, the universe doesn't have a sense of humor. It doesn't understand no. And it was confirmed when I read this in the book a couple days ago. You know, Oscar was like, ooh, don't joke about that because you're gonna fall. I'm like, but I'm joking. He's like, uh-uh, the universe. Oscar's so wise, as you all noted last week. He knew, like, you don't say things because the universe wants to make you happy. The universe wants to grant you what you want. That's the universe's purpose. Whether you call God, spirit, soul, whatever it is that you call, you know, the universe wants to make you happy, right? So it wants to give you what you ask for. So if you're asking like, oh my God, this is the worst day ever. Well, you're going to get the worst day ever, right? So there's a reason I said that to anybody who knows who I'm talking to. So you get more of that because that's what you're perpetuating. That's what you're living in. That's what you're expecting. So that's what you're going to get, right? Yes, I would like to have that. Through your attention to it, you invite it into your experience. In this attraction-based universe, there is no such thing as exclusion. Your attention to it includes in it your vibration. And if you hold in it your attention or awareness long enough, the law of attraction will bring it into your experience. For there is no such thing as no you think that would be the case. I didn't. I mean, we know what no means, right? Like in our languages, every language has the word no. So I would just assume that the universe would know that there is a no, but it's not like that. The law is that it gives you what you think most of, and that is the power of our thoughts. So what they have suggested is that okay here we go so you know how we talked about like thoughts how many thoughts we have and you know sometimes when they tell you like think about your thoughts and make sure you don't think this and make sure you don't think that well guess what it's the elephant in the room you're gonna think it more right so i've always gotten frustrated when i'm told like don't think about the elephant in the room and the elephant can be any thought it can be an anxious thought it could be you know an unworthy thought it could be a not enoughness you know thought like you're not cool enough or you know smart enough so those are the elephants <laughs> let's have, we have lots of elephants in our brains, right? So when we try not to focus on that freaking darn elephant that's like in our ear, we focus on it more. And that is what we're attracting, right? I think I found a really cool solve in here for that. And so I want that's what I wanted to kind of get to, to share because of course I've only shared like a page and a half, guys. So don't think that this is everything about the law of attraction. And if it's okay with you, as I keep reading, if you're interested, I'll keep, you know, doing lessons around this. If this came into me this week um, and I am, you know, learning from it and drawing from it like i want to share it with you right so this is where it comes from from this desire to you know make sure that you know whatever i find out that changes my mindset that i can bring to you because you all are so freaking smart and um intuitive and so ahead of so many other younglings and that's not 
anything other to say that you all seek information, right? And I love that, right? We have that in common. Like we seek information. And I think that's why we're the Fright Fam. <laughs> okay, so before I have to bid you happy weekend, yay, I just want to make sure that I give us the tool that I discovered in here on page 35, and I still have the rest of the book. I've read further, but this is the pages I wanted to start with. What I have found that is now going to help me going forward with better applying the law of attraction is helpful to understand that your emotions are letting you know whether you are in the process of creating something you want or something you do not want rather than trying to monitor your thoughts <laughs> which is so overwhelming and that's what they say that usually they tell you watch your thoughts right but the monitoring of thoughts is a difficult thing because there are so many things that you might think about and the law of attraction is continually bringing more. Rather than trying to monitor your thoughts, we encourage you to simply pay attention to how you are feeling. Y'all, for if you could choose a thought that is not in harmony with the way the broader, older, wiser, loving, inner being part of you sees it, you will feel the discord, right? The disconnect. And then you can easily redirect your thoughts to something that feels better and which therefore serves you better. How powerful is that? So if you're like having a thought and the thought doesn't give you a good feeling and you're like, oh, that doesn't feel good. I just got sad. Oh, sad is making me attract more sad. Oh, heck no, I'm not attracting any more sad. Let me find a thought that makes me happy. Oh, I remember when we went to that place and we like were eating ice cream and it was so fun and we were smiling. That makes me happy. Oh. There we go. I found a little glimmer of joy and happiness. I've redirected my feeling to something positive. And now we are in that positive creation category or, you know, frame versus the wallowing in the sadness and going deeper and deeper. And that's the rabbit hole, y'all. That's the rabbit hole. Isn't that powerful to have finally a different way to reframe that whole, like, you know, watch all your thoughts. That is, I think, an impossibility. It's an impossibility to be mindful of every thought and catch every thought and have the time in your brain to reframe it. But if you're feeling something, you can now use that as your guide as to how you want to create the rest of your day and your feelings and whatnot. So I hope that helped. I hope that helped. I hope that helped. <laughs> All right, y'all. You guys are incredible. Big love and lots of hearts. That means see you soon. Big love. Bye, everybody. I already miss you, but I gotta say happy weekend. Yeah. So bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. So if you like this video, go check out the others. I got lots of videos on this channel. So keep watching.